The DuPont Cavalcade of America, starring Van Heflin. Tonight, the DuPont Company brings you Towards the Horizon, starring Van Heflin on The Cavalcade of America. Our star tonight, Van Heflin, is currently appearing with Lana Turner in the Metro Golden Mare production of Green Dolphin Street. Now, towards the horizon, starring Van Heflin as John Wesley Powell on the Cavalcade of America. Your brother's wife sent me. We're neighbors. She wants you to come over to Professor Powell's house right away. How's the fire, Lucy? Your brother's going away. He's leaving for good and all. That's why you've got to come to try and stop him. Doctor! Doctor! Lucy, what do you mean, Fanny? Oh, Doctor, come quick over to Mrs. Powell's house. She said he's begging me to come in, and dear. Accident, Lucy? Professor Powell's going away for good, and the Indians will get him, because he only has one arm and can't fight. But he doesn't care. He just wants to go away. I should have thought of this three years ago, Emma, when the war was finished, instead of fooling myself that I could come back to everyday life. Oh, John... Darling, sit down and listen to me. I've been up at the college. The president's willing to give me a year's leave, and I fixed things at the bank. Now, if you live as we have been living, there's enough for a year and a half. John, when you keep walking up and down... Well, that's like... not including the pension for my arm. Is that the reason you're leaving? No. My clothes don't fit. Why should anything else? John, don't turn away. Is that the reason? Or is it me? Is it me? No, darling. If you don't love me, all you have to do is say so. No. I'm not angry. I'm not crying. I'm not even clinging. But... For good heaven's sake, hasn't a woman a right to understand? John Powell, will you sit down, look me in the eye, and tell me? All right, Emma. Why, darling? Why? I don't know why. Emma, I don't know. Another woman? No, darling. Tired of teaching? Teaching is all right. Tired of me? No, dear, of course not. Well, say so, John, if that's it. I can understand that. Oh, we were married during the war, and... Now it's three years after the war, and the sparkling artillery officer is a geology professor. The girl you used to walk with under the stars is a housewife. Is that it, John? No, dear. No, it oh, isn't. I wouldn't blame you. Look, ever since I was a boy on that farm in Wisconsin, I've had what they used to call a hankering for book learning. When I was only 18, I started teaching, and I've been teaching and studying geology ever since, oh, except God. for the war years. But those war years make quite an exception, quite a change. You know, crabs are lucky. When they change inside, they have a natural, painless way of throwing off their shells. But when a man changes inside, Emma, everything I've been working for all of my life has stopped meaning anything to me. Maybe if I go west, I'll find something with meaning. Maybe my geology will count for something. As it is, I hate books, I hate people, I hate myself. When will you be back, John? When I can make some sense out of myself. Emma, look at me. I'm just a dumb man, that's all. I'm gawky inside like an adolescent boy. I have to find myself all over again. Oh, dear, why isn't the world made up just of women? Well, maybe the war did it to me. Maybe when they hack off an arm, they hack off something inside, too. It must be. All I know is that in my heart, I'm all left-handed. All right, John. You go. As long as it's not me you question, I can stand it. When you're ready, come back. Emma, I don't question you for a second, and I never have. I'm the question. I'm my own big question with not enough inside to answer it. That's why I'm going west, to find the answer to why I have to go west. Well, here comes your brother. Go out back. Kiss me. Goodbye, Emma. And I love you. Darling. <laughs> Got more. 
I've got more verses in the Bible. You know, Jed, a year ago when I first walked into Jack Sumner's trading post looking for a guide, there you yeah, were. I was singing that song. <laughs> well, even the dog likes it. Bushy, <laughs> you like that? Huh? You like a spring evening? You like sitting out here in the middle of the desert? Hmm? Huh? Well, Major, you just keep sitting there looking down that river as long as you like. I'm going back to the trading post. Be seen. So long, Jed. Well, here you got yourself a new neighbor, Jack. <laughs> yeah. This trading post of yarn will be turned into a town if you keep that up. <laughs> How's that, lad? Oh, you mean the major? Yeah, the school teacher from back east. One arm. Did he ever say exactly what he'd come out here for? Never did say, and I never did ask. He weren't a trapper, I know that. Uh, tight-lipped fellow he is. As far as I know, he's never opened up wide enough to spit. Figure maybe he was in trouble back east. Uh, here's Jed now. He's guiding for him. Uh, Jed, that major you take around... What do you figure he's after? After? How do you mean? What's he doing out here? What's he after? Oh, nothing, I expect. Now, take last fall before the snow set in. He kept riding out across the desert till he found the river. Then he just kept following the river. Following any river? Any river. And now, take this spring. Soon as the first big thaw, out into the desert he goes again. Following the rivers. What could it be? What could a fellow see in flowing water to fall it like that for no reason all the time? Maybe he's loony from the war. Maybe, being of a simple mind, he finds a river just plain fascinating. Well, you know, there is something about a river. How do you mean, Jed? I mean a river. Just a river. Running on and on. What's he mean? I know what he means. He means just a river. Yeah. When you come to think of it, it, it does kind of catch your fancy. A river. Running on and on. It does, then. That it does. Bushy! Bushy! Bushy, come here. Come on back here now. Come here now. We're going to the edge of the canyon and have a good look at that river. Well, now, what's the matter? What are you afraid of? Gray wolf? Mountain lion? Bushy, now, what are you shaking for? <laughs> Wolverine? Bushy, now, come here. Come on, now. Right here, right here to the edge. <laughs> ah, Bushy, that's the dog. All right, now, what do you see? What's that way down there, huh? What is it? Come on, I can't hear you. Oh, now, stop slobbering and tell me. Right, Bushy, the Colorado River. Now, do you mean to tell me that you're scared of the Colorado River? Look at it way down there. That must be three quarters of a mile, straight drop. Smack in the middle of this arid, barren country runs the wildest, meanest river in the world, and it's all gone to waste. Useless. Nine hundred miles of useless river, and all of it waiting to be explored. Huh? That'd make quite a trip, wouldn't it? Yeah, Bushy. That'd make quite a trip. Quiet, quiet. Will all the gentlemen trappers present kindly shut their gentlemen trap? <laughs> now, there's a proposition coming up, and before Major Powell makes it, I might tell you that Billy Hawkins, Jed, and me has already took it. Yes, sir. I'm closing down this trading post come Monday fortnight. That's what I think of the Major. But, uh, we need a few more men. Uh, go ahead, Major. We're making a trip. We're going to put four rowboats in the Green River up in Wyoming. Right where the Union Pacific crosses. And we're going to keep on coming until the Colorado comes out of the canyons at Virgin River. Through the Grand Canyon? It can't be done. That there river goes plumb underground. That's what the engines say. You don't know that. Nobody knows nothing. Now, quiet. We live on the edge of a mystery. All we know is that between these two points, the river drops 5,000 feet. How much do you think the Niagara Falls drops? 170 feet, and this is 5,000. How does it drop underground? Is it all rapids, or maybe there's a dozen Niagara Falls along the way? That's what we'll discover. Now, how about it? Any more of you joining us? 
Well? What are you fellas waiting on? Waiting for you to give me the key to this here trading post. It's a thriving business, and you ain't a coming back to thrive. <laughs> <laughs> All right, men, we're about to push off. Now, uh, you've been assigned to your boat. Now the major wants to talk to you. Men, we're about to push off for our trip down to Colorado. Before we start, any questions? That's six months' supplies you've just loaded. That should be plenty. Because from all I can figure, if we're out of this canyon... Well, let's see, this is uh, May the 24th. If we aren't out in four months, well, then... We won't be out at all. Now watch the water. Study it. The wildest current must have its laws. Somebody with a question? Around the fire last night, I heard some of you talking about the Navajos. Well, I wouldn't worry for the Indians. That current will be about 25 miles an hour. It's only when we get held up for portage that there could be any trouble at all. Even then, the high cliffs and sharp bends. Any questions? Major, if you don't mind, since I'm only the cook and... You already said Andy Hall and me was too young to open our mouth. Well, sir, as far as you know, well, I mean... You mean, are we going to be rushing downstream and suddenly swoop around a sharp bend and there's the very brink of Niagara Falls? That's right, sir. That's the main question we're all asking inside. Any other questions? All right, let's go. listening to Van Heflin as Major John Wesley Powell in Towards the Horizon on the Cavalcade of America, sponsored by the DuPont Company, makers of better things for better living through chemistry. John Wesley Powell, Civil War veteran, geologist, is on his way down the canyons of the Colorado, never before explored by Indian or white man. We continue as the expedition makes camp, and Major Powell sits by the fire, writing in his journal. June the 2nd, 1868. First entry in my journal. Because so far, everything uneventful. John Wesley Powell, Civil War veteran, geologist, is on his way down the canyons of the Colorado, never before explored by Indian or white man. We continue as the expedition makes camp, and Major Powell sits by the fire, writing in his journal. June the 2nd, 1868. First entry in my journal. Because so far, everything uneventful. Men in excellent spirits. No rapids, swift, smooth water... Gives each pair of rowers a chance to learn boats and each other. Banks not high, very rich green, but climb up banks and all is desert. Suggests Euphrates. Present delightful. Future waits. Andy? Keep your eye on the Major. You know what I've been thinking all this week? He's getting pretty snappy with his orders. I've been thinking this is the sweetest life a man ever knew. Oh, you mean just coasting downstream? Oh, look at us go, slicking by that bank. Yeah. Our water's smooth as a kitten's purr. Good food, duck soup, and roasted ribs every night. Biscuits. Yeah, you're a fine cook, Billy. Except it's always so quiet. Take like now. What are we whispering for? Oh, we could talk loud. You want to talk loud? No, not particularly. Do you? I don't mind whispering. Oh, me too. Saves the voice. Guess the major figured because you and me was boys, they'd put us in the last boat because we didn't count so much. It's all right by me. <laughs> me too. That way we're together. That's all right too. Sure. That way we're in the same boat. Still good, 
Green banks change to canyon walls. Often walls rise vertical, sheer from water edge. Portage when possible, otherwise, nothing to do but pray and rush on. Here's your supper, Major. Oh, thank you, Billy. Don't you want to come down to the bank? I'll wash your hand for you before supper. How's everything in your boat? <laughs> to me, it's more the noise than anything else. Six weeks of that roar. And the walls, too. Never seen any sun or sky. Except that little crack way, way up there. And half the time, with the overhanging rocks, you can't even see that, huh? Ain't you gonna eat, sir? No, I want to get to my journal before dark. Oh, I was afraid you didn't relish my meal. Now that we're in the real canyons, don't seem to be any game anymore. How much flour do you have? Almost none, and the bacon's spoiled. But we still got the dried apples. That's fine. That's just fine. I'm looking ahead. You mind your oars. All right. Pull now. Left. Left. Major. I can see a terrific world. Don't you think I can see it? Left. They better flag the other, sir. Jack, can't you give her any more? I'm giving all I got. Together now, both oars. One. Two. How's it look, Major? Are we missing it? One. Two. Three. We're in it. We're in the well pool. Pull on your right. 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 Man, man. Are we spinning in circles? We're going to get sucked right to the center if you don't pull. Yeah. That's it. All right, now give it five and we'll right to the rim of the whirlpool. One, yeah. two, yeah. three, yeah. four. Yeah. Broke my oar. Wait a minute. What are you doing, Jack? I'm going to jump from the prow. I can jump clear of the rim, then the current will take me to that rock. The rope. Here, give me that. I can handle one oar. All right, sir. Now, as soon as we swing around to that rock again, get the rope in your teeth and swim for that rock. Keep rowing. Yeah. I can make that rock. I can pull you out. Yeah. Together. One and two. Row, Major, row. One and two. All right, jump for it. August 18th. Desolation Canyon. For the last month, every day has been worse. Hunger and constant duckings in the rapid weakens the men. Frequent rain. There seems to be a tiny invisible gnat that's the curse of all of us. Everyone short-tempered. But in all of this, there is one consolation. If I ever get out, I think I'll be able to figure out why I got in. <laughs> Along the face of a cliff like this? Sure. We got the ropes over that rock up there. But that guy... I told you there ain't no percentage in a portage here. Yeah. We both told you to shoot the rock. Who's giving me advice now? The Howland Brothers? You mean you want to bash more boats the way you did at Disaster Falls? What do you mean, the way we did? We didn't get no signal. You mean you didn't see it? We mean you didn't give it? They're right there, Major. I was right in the pilot boat with you. Done! Watch out! Get out! They're giving way! Jump! Don, somebody pull him up. He's all right, Major. I got him. Now he's ruined my watch. How can we fix our position without a watch, huh? Do you know how much that watch costs? Well, you're going to pay for it. No, sir, I ain't going to pay for it. Why should Don? If you don't pay for it, then you'll leave the party now. Now, do you hear? Major, he can't leave now. Can't even climb out of here. All right, then let him stay here and star the no-good Missouri mule. And don't you Hollands tell me what to do. It's too bad that you didn't crack up with your boat. All right, Don, you can stay until we find a place to get rid of you. But every day is going to cost you a dollar a day for food. You get that? That's final. Grub pile, fellas. Only coffee tonight. Grub pile. Hawkins. Yes, sir. Well, come here. Yes, sir. You didn't bring me my supper tonight. No, sir. I come to wash my hand. No, sir. Why not? Same reason none of the fellows have said nothing at all ever since ten days ago. Since you jumped on Bill Dunn for your watch. Hmm. Men don't like me, huh? Major, the Howland boys and me is leaving tomorrow. Leaving? You mean quitting? 
We can get out of the canyon now, and we aim to. Now, what do you think you'll find when you get to the top of the canyon? There's nothing there but desert and Indians. We'll take our chance. Anybody else leaving with us? You mean walk across the desert? Must be a Mormon settlement somewhere not too far. Uh, now, we've been at it three months together. Now you want to quit three days before the end? Yep, we want to quit. How many want to quit? Everybody. That's right. Yeah, we sure do. Well, if everybody's going to quit, that now, means Major, we're... Andy Hall and me ain't going to. How's that, boy? Well, we've been thinking all this time as, as to how we'd like to keep right on to Tidewater. So if everybody's quitting, and if you don't think we're too young, well, you could come with us in our boat. August 29th. Tomorrow will be the end. Out of the canyons. Onto the great sunlit plain. Six of us left. Two boats. Spirits up now. Can't wait to see the horizon. Look, the canyon walls are off our end. You can see. You can see the plains for yes. miles. We're out. It's all over. We've made it. Man alive, ain't <laughs> this smooth water pretty? Like a holiday. Just sitting in the boat. <laughs> no worries. Safe and snug in the sun. Kicking our heels. Just the six of us. And, and the earth flat. And the, and the sky big. Major, why don't you keep on with Billy and me? It's the Gulf of California for us. How about it? No, no. I'm going back east home. Where my wife is. And then to Washington. Major, whatever brought you out here in the first place? Well, back east I used to teach geology. But I got to be as dry and arid as this cactus country, so I came out here. You know, I made a discovery. I discovered that I wasn't using what I knew. I wasn't building out of myself toward others. Now that I've seen what this country is, I've seen what it can be turned into. There's a whole world here drying up. A river is wet. It should wet something. It has power. It should push something. Deserts can be irrigated. Floods can be controlled. It only takes the time and the doing. And it's time to start. The way you talk, Major, I, I reckon this country could turn into Eden Garden itself. <laughs> well, it could if we work at it together. The trouble is that most folks make a beginning and, and they stop. I've found what I came out here for. Now I'm going back east to do something about it. We've made a beginning. And we must never stop in this land. And he did go back. And they didn't stop. They and their children's children didn't stop. Not until the vast plains and valleys of the West were fertile and full of power. And the beginning was made by Major John Wesley Powell, whose great adventure in the canyons of the Colorado gave his life and ours purpose and productivity. For now, where Major Powell emerged from the canyons that day, there stands a monumental structure, Boulder Dam. Cavalcade has a real treat. Our play, Diamonds in the Sky, the sparkling story of Maria Mitchell, America's first woman astronomer, discoverer of stars. And speaking of discovering stars, one of next week's Cavalcade stars has just been discovered herself. Not by an astronomer, but by Broadway. She is June Lockhart, who is currently starring on Broadway in For Love or Money. Be with us next week at this same time, then, when June Lockhart will be joined by her celebrated parents of stage and screen fame, 
Kathleen and Jean Lockhart in Diamonds in the Sky on the DuPont Cavalcade of America. Tonight's DuPont Cavalcade Towards the Horizon was written by Halston Wells. Original radio story by Dan Hammerman. Appearing with Van Heflin in our play tonight was Gene Tatum as Emma, Lois Volkman as Lucy, and the singer of folk songs, Tom Scott. Music was composed by Arden Cornwell and conducted by Donald Bryan. As the holidays near, you can help your postman and the entire post office staff by wrapping packages securely, addressing them correctly, using the postal zone number, and above all, mailing early. This is Bill Hamilton inviting you to listen next week to June, Kathleen, and Jean Lockhart in Diamonds in the Sky on the Cavalcade of America, brought to you by the DuPont Company of Wilmington, Delaware. This is NBC, the national broadcasting company.